eternal joy at last when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes in the cloud with all the friends of old we'll tread the streets of gold when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes in the cloud there'll be no more goodbyes no tears will dim our eyes when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes in the cloud Good evening. It's good to see everyone tonight. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord once again. I want to welcome everyone tonight. Welcome everyone into our service. And if you are a first time visitor, please stop by the Welcome Center. But I love the verse in Exodus where it says, The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Amen. He's reigning. Amen. Join with me as we open with some prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that you reign, that you are all-powerful, you are omnipotent, you are over everything, and everything is under your feet. And we thank you, Lord, for the victory that we have in Christ tonight. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But, Lord, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And so, Lord, we've just come tonight to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, how you provide our every need. We thank you, Lord, to be a child of the Most High King tonight. And Lord, we look forward to service tonight and what you're going to do. We've come to hear from you. And so, Lord, we just pray your anointing upon everything that is said and done. May it be for one purpose, and that is to glorify Christ, that souls will be saved and lives will be changed by the power of the gospel. Have your way. We surrender it into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we worship the Lord in song tonight. You know, I got to thinking today and and I got to thinking about the goodness of God and just how much God has blessed me in my life. And you know, there, there's so much blessing there that I just can't contain it. I start I start shouting all over the house and I just it has to come out. Amen. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory whenever we get to think about. It. Let's sing that old song. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. and full of glory oh the path has never yet been told I have found the pleasure I once craved it is joy and peace within oh what a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin it is joy and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the path has never yet been told. I have found the hope so bright and clear, living in the 
realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near. I can see His smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. and full of glory oh the half has never yet been told I have found the joy no tongue can tell how its waves of glory roll it is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul it is joy and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Amen. Salvation's free, glad joy to all of Adam. Tell the story far and near of saving, keeping grace. There's joy, there's joy, there's joy, there's joy, there's joy now flowing from above. There's joy, there's joy, there's joy, there's joy, there's joy, there's joy in the fullness of His love. Joy that thrills my ransom soul can make the sad heart sing. There's joy, there's joy, glad joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. There's joy, there's joy, glad joy, glad joy in the fullness of His love. next verse I want you to listen to what it says I'll live for Christ through this dark world and faithful I will be amen, amen. the joy I know yep. that keeps my soul shall last eternally I want you to think about Praise that God. you see Christ came and he died on the cross to save us and so when ever we're saved we ought to be living faithfully for him. We ought to be walking in the way. Amen. You see, as long as we walk in the way, the Bible tells us that we have, we have fellowship one with, a, with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You see, that ought to bring joy. I'm going to say something tonight. Don't get mad at me. But that ought to make a, a, that ought to make a Methodist shout. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that ought to be enough to make anyone shout the salvation of their soul. Amen. So let's sing this last verse and sing it like you mean it. Amen. I'll live for Christ through this dark world and faithful I will be. The joy I know that keeps my soul shall last eternally.
From the very get-go tonight, when we started singing that song, I thought about what life was going to be like when he comes in the clouds. Not one more leaky faucet, not one more blade of grass to cut, not one more cistern, not one more well, uh, septic tank to clean, not one more sickness, not one more call during the middle of the night, not one more 
sin to ever have to worry about. Think about that for a second. That'd be worth it all. I'm telling you, when he comes in the clouds, we'll never have to deal with that again. And I don't know if you ever think about that or not, but boy, I tell you, I have weeks. I have weeks, I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, sometimes when I do funerals, sometimes, I almost get jealous. They're, those people never have to worry about anything that we're going to have to deal with again. And I'm going to tell you something. One of these days, by the grace of God, I'm going to make it. I've got to make it. And I'm going to tell you, I hope and pray that you're determined in your mind to make it. Don't let anything, don't let anything, those silly little things sometimes that so confound us from day to day, don't let anything change your mind from what you know to be true. And that is one day he's going to come in the clouds. He says, and I love that last verse in that fourth chapter of, of the First Thessalonians. He said, therefore, comfort one another with these words. That's why we come to church, to comfort one another, remind one another. that We don't have to deal with this forever. Not forever. We may have to go through some things, but boy, I tell you what, one of these days those things will be done. Man, I'm looking forward to that. Not one more prayer request. Think about that. That ought to get you excited tonight, people. That ought to keep you on the path. And I'm thankful today to know that I come to the house of God and I come expecting God to move tonight. I expect God to heal people. I expect Him to save people. I expect His Word to go out over the waves of the Internet. I, I expect it to go out on the radio. I, I expect it to accomplish whatever it is that God wants it to accomplish. And I just believe that tonight. I'm trusting that. And as we go to Him in prayer tonight, we have a few things here that, are, that are, we want to mention. Don't forget about our tithes and offerings. We always want to mention that on your way in and way out. And if you can, you can do that, I'm sure the Lord will bless you for that. But there's a lot of people that need prayer. Kevin Farley, I guess he's having his procedure tomorrow. And so we want to, he's got to have a heart cath tomorrow. So let's remember him in prayer. Arlene Wallace's family, which they're having the funeral tomorrow, I think at 1 o'clock. So I want to remember them. Bobby Carpenter has eye problems. We got a call about that, I think, yesterday. Wilma Krause is still recovering from surgery. She still needs prayer. Emma Lentz has bad headaches, and Tony's had some bad ones this week, too. She's been sick all week with a headache. I don't remember her. I know Tina's not feeling well tonight. I know she's got a little bit of a fever and a cough. I want you to remember her in prayer. Uh, Richard Huggins, we just had a, a one called Richard Huggins had a stroke. I want to remember him. And then Brendan uh, Cresong, uh, we need to remember him in prayer. Um, Dolores Wells, uh, uh, Brother Randy just gave me her name. She's, she's got some Alzheimer's or dementia, something going on that, that Randy's really brokenhearted over. I want to remember her. And then I, I preached uh, Sunday night, and there, there, was a, there was a lady and man that lead the services there. I wish I could remember their name, but I didn't forget their son's name. Uh, they're going, driving to California and then going to Spain and then back and forth from wh wherever. But they're going to, to see their son this week. And his name was Philip. I told her we would remember him in prayer. He was brought up in church. She said that he's got, you know, the Bible says, you know, about what, what it is about knowledge. And knowledge is dangerous sometimes. And, uh, you know, he's, he's full of head knowledge now. And he's kind of, he doesn't think about God. But he was raised in church. And so I want to remember him in prayer. I told her that I would remember him in prayer this week. His name is Philip. And they're driving there now to see him. And I'm praying that God will move uh, on, on his behalf. And don't forget about our country. Uh, we had someone pray last night at Cowboy Church. I want to remember them. Had others lift their hands up for prayer. There's been people here that have been troubled. There's been troubled waters here almost every service. And I know sometimes you, you think, well, maybe next time. You know, when, when is that next time going to run out? You know, we don't know. Um, somebody said last night, said, well, they're, they, they like church. They're going to come back. Well, who knows if they're going to get a comeback? Only God knows that. But let's pray for those souls that have been under conviction, that God would continue to deal with them, that their heart would still stay soft. You keep turning God off, I'm telling you, your heart will get hard. And I'm praying before that happens that they'll come to know Christ before it's too late. I want to remember Kevin tonight as he, as he brings the Word of God. And I want you to look at your neighbor today before you come up. You know, you know, I've said this a lot of times. We see each other sometimes maybe twice a week or three times a week, but you can tell when people are burdened. And I tell you, sometimes your neighbor needs a prayer. They need uplifted. Grab their arm and take them to the altar and pray with them if they need it. We always like to raise a hand for our unsafe family. Let's come gather around the altar today. Brian, if you would, lead us in a word of prayer. And let's pray for our service today. Pray for those that are singing. 
uh, those that may testify, whatever it is God's got on your heart today. And most of all, if you're lost today, please let this be the last day you're lost because you can come. Yes. Okay. okay, let's remember Faye. Let's remember her tonight. Pray that God would heal her. Let's all stand if you can. Dear Heavenly Father, what a beautiful day that you've given us today. What a beautiful time of the year that we're able to, to gather together in your church, in your congregation, to believe together with saints, to worship together with saints. God, I just thank you for that privilege. I pray that we would never take it for granted, but God, I thank you for that. I thank you for the your Holy Spirit and how we feel Him here this morning or tonight and how we, we know He's here because we brought Him with us. We don't have to, to ask Him to come. We already know that He's here. But God, it is so nice to feel Him in the abundance that we feel Him tonight. God, I thank You for Brother Jim. I thank You for the leading that, that You've given him for the songs for us to sing. God, there is victory in Jesus. And I thank you for that. I thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for our sins. And I thank you for giving me more than one chance that you knocked on my heart's door several times before I yielded and give my heart to you. And I thank you for that. And I thank you that I'm a joint heir now and I can call upon you any time, any day, any time of the day, I can call upon you. So God, I call upon you right now. And I ask that you would reach and touch each and every one of these requests that were mentioned. And I ask you to touch the ones that weren't mentioned. I know you know the, the requests that are on our hearts. You know our prayer requests before we even ask. And I thank you for that. And I pray that you would touch each and every one of them. I pray that you would be with our lost loved ones, our children that are lost. I pray that you would touch my girls, that you would reach them, and that you would help us to accept whatever has to take place before you can reach them. I give you full authority to do whatever it takes to where they would not leave into eternity lost. And I ask that you would be with my family here, their loved ones that are lost. I pray that you would do whatever it takes to reach them. I think of many of them often and how that some come week after week and sit in service after service and never turn their heart over to you i would pray that you would soften their hearts loosen the grip that the devil has on them to where they could hear and maybe see you for the first time i pray that you would be with brother kevin tonight that your holy spirit would just speak right through him that he would open his mouth and that words would just come out that's directly from you. I know you've laid something on his heart. I pray that you would give him the, the courage to say that what needs to be said. I thank you for using our pastor. I thank you for our pastor. I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around him and his family. Take any kind of distraction whatsoever out of his life. I pray a rebuke against the devil in Jesus' name that he would be bound that he would not be able to distract anyone here tonight. Thank you, dear God, for all that you do. I pray that you would be with Barb as she sings specials tonight. Just give her the umption of the Holy Spirit to sing unto you that it would be a sweet fragrance unto you, that it would not be for our entertainment, but it would be for your entertainment. Thank you, dear God, for all that you do. We can never repay you for what we owe you. So I pray that you would be glorified in the remainder of this service. And we ask everything in Jesus' name. Amen.
send this to Jack and Tina for Imagine That to learn and, and then a little voice told me no this is a Barb song and I s sent uh, Barb a text and I said Barb I think this song is for you and I believe it with all my heart that she was supposed to sing it but I believe the song was for me um, it's called My Anchor of Hope Listen to the words of this song. It's blessed me over and over again. And it's blessed me already tonight to sing it with her. Listen to the words, and I hope it blesses you.
was tossed by the billows on life's troubled sea. Without an anchor, there was no hope for me. glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. You know, unity of God's people is of utmost importance. God's people are one body. God's people are unified by the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit of God that gives us unity. God's people are unified by being in submission to Christ as their Lord and Savior. In other words, you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's of utmost importance to be considered one of God's. D.S. Warner spoke of a church triumphant when he wrote, "'Tis not in the church of Jesus that people yet live in sin, but in the dark creeds they're joining and vainly trusting in. But thank God for a church triumphant. All pure in this world below, for the kingdom that Jesus founded does triumph over every foe. Amen. We see the church triumphant in prophecy. In Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah brings forth the church of God prophetically, where God declares his church. She's a church that is triumphant. For example, in Isaiah, the second chapter, Isaiah the prophet writes, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, 
and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. In other words, this prophecy is of the church that Jesus builds. And folks, we have been in the last days since Christ came to this earth. The last days include the spiritual reign of Christ, where he's reigning in the hearts and lives of his people. The last days includes the opposition of Antichrist spirit. And how many know there is a spirit that's Antichrist coming against the work of Christ, the person of Christ, and the people of Christ? The last days include the perilous times of those whose love will wax cold and will fall away. But the last days include, thank God, the glorious return of Jesus Christ. He's coming for his bride, the church. And then the final judgment and the lake of fire. Yet Isaiah tells us the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Now, folks, I want to tell you the kingdom of Christ is above every other kingdom. The church is called the Lord's house. We are built upon the apostles and prophets where Christ is our only and sure foundation, where God's people are lively stones making up this building, and where the only entrance into her is one door, and Christ alone is that one true door. There is no other entrance but through faith in Him. But God's church is on the mountain because she's immovable. She's secure to the rock of ages. She's secure in the everlasting arms of God's love. God's church is on the mountain because Christ purchased her. Upon Mount Calvary with his precious blood. And God's church is on the mountain because of God's power that's in her. He guards her by the power of the Holy Ghost. God's church is on the mountain because of Christ's superiority. He is over every other religion, friend. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. He's above Buddha and Muhammad. He's, behind, he's above Joseph Smith and Jehovah Witnesses. He's above Joe Osteen and his following. He's above Pope Francis. There's only one head and Lord of the church, friend, and it's Jesus Christ. The church belongs to him, and he builds his church. Listen, the church that Jesus builds alone is exalted. From sea to sea, from north to south, from east to west, from star to star, Christ has all authority, and he alone's he alone reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords. Well, we come over to Isaiah 35. In that chapter, we see God's church is on a way. Isaiah says she's on a highway. She's on the holy way. And he says in verse 8, And the highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not therein. There are those who want to bring the church down. There are those who want to make the church something of their own doing, of their own making, and of their own way. But Christ came to put his church on a higher way. He brought her out of the wilderness. He's established her upon a highway. That highway is called the way of holiness. And brother and sister, you and I have got to be on that way. Listen, if you're in sin or have something hiding in your life, you're not traveling the right way. Christ's highway, my friend, is a holy way. It's for the Jew, it's for the Gentile, it's for every color, every race, every man or woman. It's the king's highway, it's the holy way. It's for the high, the low, the rich, the poor, the strong, the weak, the learned, and the unlearned. Jesus came to die for all of us. When he died for you, he arose from that grave. He's coming back one of these days. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, if you're not saved tonight, you better get in. Because all can come now while there's time. 
Well, this I know, the, the highway of holiness is the old and sure way. Others have traveled on. It's the tried and true way. It's the most excellent way for a man or woman to live. No obstruction can block her. No sin or satanic scheme can stop her. No foul or unclean spirit can change her. For those that are washed in the blood of Jesus, sanctified by the Spirit, led on the right path by God's holy word, listen, no scoffer, no hypocrite, no defiler, no adulterer, no liar, no drunkard, no whoremonger, no dope addict, no idolater, no mere professor are on this way. Listen, if you're on the way, you are following Jesus Christ, my friend. I surely believe you'd better get right or you'll get left. And I'm not saying you're going to get left behind. I say you get left out. You'll be left in your sin because you are going to meet God at the judgment. We all will. We come over to the 62nd chapter of Isaiah, chapter 62. We see the glory of God's church. The glory of God's church. And I want to tell you, I believe this is a message that is needful for our day. How about if we all just stand together as we honor the Lord. And as we read his word tonight, let's just open our hearts and invite the presence of Jesus for Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no, no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine for that which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it. And praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Amen. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed it to the end of the world. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with them and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out. A city not forsaken. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a glorious church. What a glorious church. Oh, God, help us to see her tonight in all of her beauty. For, Lord, you're coming. And, Lord, it's time to be getting ready. It's time to be getting ready. Father, tonight we pray. Oh, God, 
fall upon us with such power as, Lord, we've never really known. And may eyes be opened to behold the King, for the King is coming. I can hear the trumpet. The King is coming. And friend, He's coming for you. He's coming for me. Have your way tonight, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you, I'm a, I feel like Isaiah. <laughs> How he starts off tonight when he says, please you may be seated. He says, for Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. In other words, I can't help but talk about her. I can tell you tonight, friend, I love the church of God. I love her because she is most beautiful, splendorous, glorious. I love her because she's my spiritual home. She's the mother of all the saved. She withholds the whole family of God. And Isaiah says, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Listen, friend, as we touched on Sunday, it's not time to be slumbering saints. We're not to be snoozing saints but we're to be awake, we're to be woke towards God. We need to be woke Christians in a woke church. Why? Because souls are at stake. We need a fresh vision of the glory of God. We need a fresh touch of the Spirit's fire. Why? Because too many in church are lukewarm. Too many have grown cold. Too many are losing the fervent love for Christ. It is this love for Christ that makes all the difference. You remember when Jesus said, Mary hath made the wise choice. While Martha was keeping just busy, she was just going through the motions, Mary soaked up the presence of Jesus. I'm afraid many congregations have gotten, have forgotten what it's like to soak themselves in the presence of of the king. Many have forgotten what it means to be children of God, saved, redeemed, and belonging to Christ. Many have forgotten to soak themselves in the presence of Jehovah Shammah. Who's that? That means the Lord is here. You know, if people really believe that, we'd act differently. We would. Everything would be geared towards getting people to him. Isaiah is concerned here that the brightness of the church should not dim. The prophet, he's concerned that all the enemies of God's church, false religions, that they would be pale in comparison to God's glorious church. Isaiah is concerned that God's glory does not shine through man-made religion. His glory shines only through his glorious church. And Isaiah is concerned that the church keep the glory, that she lose not the glory of God. How? Well, he answers. He goes on in verse 2 and says, The Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. In other words, we keep the glory of God by keeping the glorious one. We are to keep near him. Hear me tonight, church. Man, if you are a Christian, you have got to keep close to Jesus Christ. Exalting Him, walking with Him, worshiping Him. God's glory shines through His church. God's glory shines through men and women who are near Him. I don't believe you can have a long-distant relationship with Christ. 
Well, I'll call you up when I need you. I'll come to church every once in a while. No, friend, if you love Jesus Christ, my friend, I want to tell you what, your life belongs to him. Paul, he wrote to the church in Corinth, and he said in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Notice, he said, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hear him tonight. He's saying the glory of God comes through the knowledge of Christ and the experience of Christ in your life and in your heart. We are his vessels. Isaiah also declares to us it is the Lord's presence in the midst of his church that truly makes the church the church. Those who bear his name, who are named Christians, Christ followers, we hold the family name. I'm a Christian first of all. Because I follow Christ. And I'm not ashamed of him. Jesus said if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. But I'm not afraid to say I belong to the church of God. I didn't join her. Thank God I was born into her. In verse 2, Isaiah says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Listen, in the early church we see those who bore the family name. And they were not ashamed of it. Now we've got a whole bunch who want to change the name. They want to leave off the name. Anything you can think of will name the church. I'm going to tell you the church is God's church. She's his crown of glory. She is his heart's desire. She is his delight. Notice he says in verse 3, Thou shalt also be called, be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be turned forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Thou shalt be called Hephzibah, thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. I know we sing those words, that song, I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> I got close. I'm not going to sing it. And we sing, Beulah land, I'm longing for you. And someday on thee I'll stand. And many times we sing that song and we begin to weep and cry and reminisce. And yet along, there's no secret, there is a cold deadness in many churches. And yet we continue to sing, Beulah Lamb, I long for you. How can we be dead when by the grace of God we've been redeemed and saved from a life of sin and bondage? How can we be dead when we bear the righteousness of Christ? The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that raises a sinner man or a sinner woman out of a life of bondage. How can we be dead as God's people when he has raised us up and we're seated in heavenly places and we are kings and priests? How can we be dead when we are more than conquerors and we are reigning with Christ? How can we be dead when Jesus is reigning within That term, Hephzibah, means not forsaken. Thou shalt, not, thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, for thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. The Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Listen, when 
Nothing can separate us from the love of God. When the Lord delights in us and when we belong to him, friend, I can tell you there's no difficulty, no discouragement, no reproach, no persecution, no rejection. No matter how others may treat you or mistreat you, my friend, listen, the Lord, he will not forsake you and glory to God. You're living now in Beulah land. You're living now in Beulah land. That word means, and it carries the, the term and the truth of you are not forsaken. Brother and sister, I'll tell you what, I've been forsaken by people. People that I trusted. People that I thought would always be there. But I can tell you this, my friend, the Lord has never forsaken me. This special bond of Christ and his people in his church that we are his by salvation and we are entirely his by sanctification. We are a bride adorned with the graces and garnished by the spirit and the apostle Paul, he says she's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. He says that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. The hymn writer well said it. Tis a glorious church without spot or wrinkle washed in the blood of the Lamb. Tis a glorious church without spot or wrinkle washed in the blood of the Lamb. Isaiah is pointing us to her tonight that we should see this glorious church that we should be a part of and experience all that God has for us and that we should live out every day of our lives. He says in verse 5, For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. In other words, God rejoices over his people. God rejoices over his church. God loves her. So much so, my friend, listen. John saw in Revelation. He said, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Just as God took a bride from Adam's side and called her his wife, listen, God took a bride from the side of Jesus and called her his wife, the church. Just as God created Adam and Eve together to populate this earth, so Jesus and his church are to go forth with the gospel of truth that will lead souls out of sin's bondage and populate heaven. Just as God, through, just through Christ, we can know God as our one true Father. So thank God we can know the church as our one true Mother. Amen. Amen. I heard one of our brothers say to somebody, I just heard it in conversation passing, I'm your brother just from another mother. <laughs> and I knew what he was meaning, but, and then the, the, you think about it, it's like, oh, let me think about this. <laughs> you see, Jesus makes us brothers and sisters. We have one true spiritual father. But the truth is we have one true spiritual mother. The church originated in the heart and mind of God, not man. Paul said, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. She came down from heaven. She came to earth. Christ gave his life for her. He died for you and I. He laid it all out for us. He put it on the line that you and I could have a relationship with God. He paid the debt we could not pay on Calvary with his own life, his own blood. My friend, he gave himself as a sacrifice, as the Lamb of God to save the most vilest man or woman. He's the gift of God. His salvation's a gift. Eternal life is a gift, my friend. He gave himself, and thank God tonight, he's given the Holy Spirit to us. Listen, some today, they want to silence the church. 
They want to stop her influence. They want to burn her down from meeting together. I can tell you, you'll never stop God's church. Some want to banish her book from the influence upon culture. God says, I have set watchmen for her who will not be silenced. Listen, verse 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. I think every pastor who gets in the pulpit, he ought to be seeking God from all of his heart. And he ought to lift up Christ the best that he can. We're just human vessels. God doesn't need any of us. But thank God, he loves us and he can use us. God says that he will establish and nourish his church. Notice verse 7, and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise. And the earth the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. The sons of the stranger should not drink thy wine for that which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. They that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. I've had people come to me over, not just the past weeks, I would say months. Some have said, the churches that they've gone to, they're starving. They're starving. People are hungry. Listen, I want to tell you, the devil, he does not give up. If we want to see people saved, if we want to be a church that God will show his glory through, friend, we got to get closer to him. And finally, Isaiah says, he will raise her up and he'll keep her. He says, go through, go through the gates, prepare you the way the people cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, behold, thy salvation cometh, behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Friend, Jesus is coming. And you may meet him sooner than later. Are you ready? Are you ready? And finally, Isaiah just simply says, and they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. I realize some here tonight, you've been hurt by people, you've been hurt by circumstances in life. You've been discouraged. You've been let down. Many are wounded. Many are broken. Can I tell you, the Lord will never forsake you. Put your trust in Jesus. Turn your life over to him. He's a friend that stays closer than a brother. He's one you can always depend upon. He's one that will always be there. He'll see you through. And friend, I want to tell you, you could live 10,000 lives for Jesus Christ and it would not be enough to be thankful for who he is and what he's done for us. When Jesus healed the 10 lepers, you remember only one of them came back to thank him. And Jesus said, where are the nine? Where are those that I also Gave them the same benefit as I gave you. And Jesus told that man, you go in peace. You are healed. And I want to tell you, that man lived the rest of his life for the glory of God. I'm going to invite you tonight to come and put your life in the hands of Christ. He will not forsake you. Come to him tonight as we stand together. No matter what you might be going through tonight, the Lord is always faithful. 
And I'm going to invite you to come and, and lay, lay it all to his feet tonight. Lay your, lay your life down and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to live for you. If you've wandered away from him, I want you to come back tonight to him. If you've never confessed him as Lord and Savior, tonight come and confess him. Come forward. Come on. Do not deny him in any way, shape, or form. Do not deny him the glory that is due to him. Friend, I believe this. We can have as much of him as we want. He is the bread that satisfies. He is the living water. If you drink, you will not thirst. He will satisfy everything you've ever stood in need for in this life. He'll be a friend when there's no one to be found. He'll be a brother or sister to you. He'll be a parent to you. He'll be everything that you ever desired. Come on. Come on. Come to him tonight. We need him. We need his glory to shine through us. We need more of him than anything else. Oh, that our lips might magnify the Lord and our hearts might be filled with the glory of God, that our lives might emanate the very essence of Jesus, that others see Christ in us. Come on, come to him tonight. Say, Lord, I surrender. Come now. Thank you, Father, for these that are coming, these that are watching. Help them to open their heart in obedience to Christ, to not turn him away. He stands at the door and he knocks. Come on, open up. Let him in tonight. Let him in in a fresh way. Say, Lord, I desire more of you. I want to be more than I could ever be by living my life in the flesh. Fill me tonight, Spirit of the living God. Let your power flow through my life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. is empty no more traffic in the streets Thank you. all the builders tools are silent no more time to harvest we busy housewives seize their labors in the courtroom no debate work on is all suspended as the king comes through the gate happy faces line the hallways those whose lives have been redeemed broken homes that he has mended those from prison he has Little children and the aged hand in hand stand all aglow who were crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. Royal robes are now unfolding, heaven's grandstand. Spells the end of sin and wrong. His regal robes are now unfolding. Heaven's grand stand all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled. Starts to sing amazing grace. Oh, the coming the king is coming I just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face I see oh the king is coming the king is coming praise God
it's your treasure, one that fadeth not away. Is not this the land of Beulah? Blessed, blessed. you coming today we've had great results and while they're still praying we'll gather around the church and they'll finish up praying and then we'll go ahead and close <laughs> 